Thank you, Joe. Thank you for that beautiful music. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, and welcome everybody online. Merry Christmas. We just welcome you all into our uh, service today. Uh, we have some very special things going on uh, with our service today. We have a special Reader's Theater for the Gospel. We have our Advent candle lighting where we actually light the Christ light, the center candle. And I'm going to be starting this morning with a poem from a new book that I just received. And I'll just tell you a little bit about this author because I feel a connection with her. Her name is Ariane Braithwaite Lane, and she's a writer, a pastor, and creator who is passionate about connection. A native South Dakotan, Ariane planned on law school until God nudged her toward Taiwan, where everything changed. An ordained clergy couple minister in the Presbyterian Church and a team writer for Illustrated Children's Ministry, Ariane was, um, has written for her blog. She's written for many other works, and she lives in Wilmette, Illinois, with her husband Jeff and their two children. So I'm going to read you her poem called For Christmas Day. Lord Jesus, you've asked me to be a womb for you this Advent, to be a space where your love grows and your grace expands. You've asked me to let the sides of my soul stretch, that I might become large with your promise. Being a womb for you has pushed me to the furthest rim of who I am. You've asked me to grow for people who never say thank you or I'm sorry. You've called me to care for children who pull me to new levels of selflessness. You've softened my gritted teeth in tough phone calls or repetitive criticism. All while my soul groaned with growth. In the pain, you enlarged me. In the swelling, you dwelt within me. And when I questioned whether I could make any more room in myself or my life for you, the one who asks everything of me your spirit brought me forward in its quiet, miraculous way. You whispered, my hollowing was for a yet greater filling. And now today, Lord Jesus, you are born, born in me, born to me, born for me. Thank you. Lord Jesus, Emmanuel. Amen. That was a poem written by Ariane Braithwaite Lane, and it was based on Luke chapter 1, verse 38, Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 14, and Galatians 2, 20. Church, Merry Happy Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We used to wonder if God loved us. And now, because of Christ, we know it's true. We know. We don't wonder. We don't wander in the darkness. We know. We, what better reason for celebration can there be than that knowledge? So let's begin together by joining our voices and singing, Oh, Sing a Song of Bethlehem. And you will find that in your red hymnal. You'll also...
please join me in our call to worship. You'll find it in your bulletin this morning, and you'll also find it up here on the screen. So in an attitude of prayer, we call to worship and center ourselves, letting go of our stories for this time together and opening our hearts to the stories from Scripture. Creator God, in the beginning, you spoke all that is into existence and you breathed life into the world. You made light in the midst of darkness and all that you made was good. You sent John the Baptist to be a witness to the light you would send into the world. The light of the world through whom all things were created came into the world, but the world did not recognize him. The son came to his own people and they rejected him. When you invite us each by name to draw near to you, to find life in you, we turn away. We cause harm to others and scoff at your sweet grace and mercy each day. But you continue to love us, protect us, and wait patiently as we find our way home to you. You give us the opportunity to be called daughters and sons of the Most High God. You call us to believe in the one who sent, who you sent to us, a reflection of you who reveals your love. And though we constantly reject you and find love hard, though our thoughts and deeds are often evil, you still find ways to care for us and call us your own. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Rejoice, rejoice, God is with us. And now I want to welcome up our Advent candle lighting team. We come today and we have the opportunity now to light all five candles on our Advent wreath. The first candle on the first week of Advent represented hope. The second candle, preparation or waiting or prophecy. The third candle, that was the pink candle. If you'll remember that, that was the third week of Advent. That candle represents peace and joy. And the fourth candle, love and adoration. We talked last weekend, not about worshiping Mary, but about venerating Mary, respecting, honoring, So on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, we're going to be lighting the center candle. And that is the Christ light candle. This candle is called the Christ candle and represents the life of Christ that has come into the world. The color white represents purity. Christ is the sinless, spotless, pure Savior. Those who receive Christ as Savior are washed of their sins and made whiter than snow. Thank you. And our verse for our Advent wreath this morning is from Isaiah chapter 1, 18. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, 
they shall be like wool. Please join me in the prayers of the people. Our first reading today will be from Isaiah, or really it's our second reading, will be from Isaiah 9, 2 through 7. The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at its harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authorities rest upon his shoulders as he was named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thank you, Vincent. Our gospel reading today you're going to find in the other handout that you have. So if you'll follow along, I want to invite our readers up the Werner family will be reading with us. So to get the whole story of the Christmas story, uh, if you just read from one gospel, you actually be, uh, you'll be short a few sheep. I don't know if anybody noticed that or not, but each gospel, it, um, how they tell the Christmas story is a little bit different. So what's unique about this particular version of the Christmas story written by a Methodist pastor in Florida, uh, is that she combines uh, a couple of the Gospels together in order to make this complete uh, Christmas story. All right. So uh, let's just make sure you're mic'd here. Mic the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph and of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he called her and said to her, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. How can this be since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy, he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month of her who, has, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. I am here. I am the Lord your servant. Wait. I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to the public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, 
Do not be afraid to take Mary and your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quinarius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave, her, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not not be be afraid, afraid, for for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you you is is born born this day day in the city of David a Savior, who who is the Messiah, Messiah the Lord. This This will be a sign for you, you, and you will find a child wrapped wrapped in bands of cloth and and lying in a manger. manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory Glory to God God in the highest highest heaven, heaven and on on earth peace among among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who is the king king of the the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have have come come to to worship worship him. him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed in all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I, too, may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. 
And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, take the child and his mother, and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So Joseph got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I call my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. That was then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice voice is heard heard in Ramah, Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel Rachel weeping weeping for her children children and refusing to be comforted because because they they are are no more. more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get Get up, up, take take the child child and his mother, mother and go to the land land of Israel, for those those who who were were trying to take the child's child's life are are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets. He will be called a Nazarene. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious
chains shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy, in grateful chorus raise we, let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord, oh praise his name forever, his power and glory evermore proclaim, his power. Well, let us pray. May the love that is in our hearts this Christmas season, may it be evident in our actions, and may it sustain us all year through. May all these offerings we give today these offerings of words, of hymns, of gestures to one another. May they all find a place to cling to in our hearts, and may they bear fruit in the coming days. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. So today in our gospel, we heard, but Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. My professor at seminary, Dr. Lewis, brought to my attention that the use of the word ponder here is really interesting because in Greek, it's actually sumbalo, and balo means to throw, and sum means with. So usually we think of the verb ponder as pretty passive, right? You're just kind of, hmm, let me think about it. Right? But actually, it's not passive. Biblically, it is not a passive verb. Throwing something is not passive, right? And I don't know about you, but didn't it feel like all of a sudden Christmas was here this year? Like just all of a sudden, like it was kind of like thrown at us. Lots going on in people's lives. Lots of hurts, lots of pains, lots of things have happened this year. And all of a sudden, here's Christmas. Sometimes life just throws things at us and leaves us feeling a little wind beaten or a little brow beaten or whatever analogy works there for you, depending on if you're in the field or maybe you're driving a lot. All these things for Mary, all these supernatural happenings, an angel visiting her, all those things were heavenly, but I also think they may have felt thrown at her and at Joseph, too. Imagine what his thoughts must have been. What is going on? And at the same time, they were divine and heavenly, and they knew that because they said yes to God. They were also terrifying things that have been happening to both Mary and Joseph. Throughout our Christmas story, all these things have been thrown at them, but they just kept saying yes to to God. 219. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. In her pondering, I'm sure she is all at once acknowledging the radical nature of the work she has just done in giving birth to the Savior of the world, Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, and pondering her own agency in bringing forth this tiny, tiny child, the savior of the world, of everything. Now remember last weekend when I mentioned that the Christmas story is radical and subversive. Indeed it is. We just got done hearing about the genocide of all the little boys. 
So in that Christmas joy, there is also Christmas pain. And maybe this Christmas season, you're feeling joy, but also pain. And it's very confusing and hard to bifurcate those two things, right? Sitting beside each other. That is the Christmas story. So go out today knowing that you are part of this radical, subversive story. Everything that is thrown at you all day long, every day, right? It's also a part of your faith journey. And yes, it may be a rocky one, but God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. Bishop Bard, in his Christmas address, said, Christmas time is here, whether you're ready or not. And truly, isn't that every day? Here it is, whether we're ready or not, just like for Mary and for Joseph. Here's Jesus, ready or not. You are now his parents, and you need to care for him. So let me just share one more parable for you, with you. And this one's not from the Bible, but I believe it to be biblically inspired. It's from a book I'm reading for one of my classes at seminary, uh, A Humankind, A Hopeful History by Rutger Bregman. And it reads, An old man says to his grandson, There's a fight going on inside of me. It's a terrible fight between two wolves. One is evil, angry, greedy, jealous, arrogant, and cowardly. The other is good, peaceful, loving, modest, generous, honest, and trustworthy. These two wolves are also fighting within you and inside every person, too. After a moment, the boy ponders this. Which wolf will win? The old man smiles. The one you feed. So as we sing our final hymn today, let the song linger in your life. Let the parable linger in your life. Let the Christmas story guide you in your life, no matter what is thrown at you. Peace on earth. Good will to all. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. You'll find it in 895 in your hymnal. You'll also find it up here on the screen. This is the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray and asked us to keep praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And please join me in our very ecumenical affirmation of faith that all Christians everywhere pray. You'll find this on page 7 in your hymnal or up here on the screen as well. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Sometimes people ask me what that little asterisk means 
on the word Catholic, and you'll see it's Catholic with the small c, because actually Catholic means universal when you use the small c. So as we prepare for our offering today, I just have one plate, and I'm going to start it on this side. And so whoever is the last person to receive it on that side, if you'll just bring it right back around to the front. And then if you'll um, stand and sing the doxology with me, I'll cue that up. And that's also in your hymnal. It's 95 in your hymnal, but you're welcome to see it here on the screen as well. Please rise if you are ready and able to do so. Together, let's pray as forgiven and reconciled people, we wholeheartedly offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Amen. You may be seated. Wishing all of you here and all of you streaming us online a very, very Merry Christmas. Please stay um, safe and healthy as you possibly can. And I wish you much joy this season all the way through the coming year. May you go forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please join in our closing hymn. You'll find this also in your hymnal and up here on the screen. It's 238, and we'll sing verses 1 and 2. Um, Angels, we have heard on high. Mm -hmm. 